welcome to The Framing Counter. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I go about framing articles from magazines. Um, just some tips on how to remove the article safely so that you don't tear or crease any of the pages, and some tips on how to mount them, and yeah. I hope it'll be helpful for you, uh, no matter how you're going about doing this, whether you're going to be picture framing it yourself or if you are going to be bringing it to a local framer in your area. Please feel free to leave me any comments below if you have any questions uh, about doing this yourself or if you would prefer that I do it for you, <laughs> which a lot of people do. So leave a comment below and I'll help you the best I can. All right, let's talk about this. Okay, tip number one is to have multiple copies of the magazine, if at all possible. This just helps um, its redundancy, right? So if by accident you rip one of these, you have a third one or a second one that you can try to remove the article from. It also allows you to frame uh, both sides if it's printed on both sides say this is the cover or you know this is page one and then page two is where it starts and so you want both of these to be seen um, if you aren't able to get multiple copies you can bring the magazine to a local printer and they could run off really nice copies for you um, that way you can have both sides in color and have them look really nice. Um, I would bring the magazine to the printer after you've uh, disassembled the article. That way there's no uh, creasing and there's no bending of the pages in the copier. Okay, so that's tip number one. So the next tip is breaking the spine. I know a lot of us who read books or collect magazines would prefer to keep this pristine, uh, but for this purpose, you actually do want to ruin this spine um, for a couple reasons. Uh, it's easiest to remove the pages once the spine is broken. Also, uh, like I said on tip one, if you have to copy anything, uh, this curve of the page is removed when you break the spine and then also say your article is close to here and you're like oh it's just a small article I don't need to rip the whole thing but because it's close you think you might use some scissors well sometimes when people cut with scissors they cut too close see how close I just cut to that ad a lot of times because you just want to frame that the average person thinks oh i'll just cut this out but they end up cutting it with scissors and they're not straight lines and so what you end up bringing to your framer is a wonky bit of a mess um, and then they have to compensate for that which means you'll probably end up losing some of your article because it's not square there are ways around that, but to ensure that you get just a really nice presentation, breaking the spine and not using scissors is best. So let me show you how to break a spine. It's actually really simple. So my article is a big one for this project. I want to break the spine nowhere near the article. That way I can have some control over what I get out. So this is the last page of the article. So I'm going to flip a few pages over and this is where I'm gonna break it. And breaking a spine for a magazine is super simple. You're just going to spread the pages and I'm putting some pressure on here and I'm just making the glue, the glue just kind of, um, I kind of snap the glue, I guess. And then once I've done that and it lays relatively flat, this is the side of the magazine that I do not need. There's nothing in here for the article. And so I'm going to, hopefully I'm on, yeah, here we go. I'm going to, with this hand firmly pressed down on the magazine, 
the, the side of the magazine that I need. I'm going to pull not up, but out. So I'm going to be parallel with my counter. So let me, I'm kind of actually not even parallel. I'm doing like a fan. And so you can see here that it's ripping. And so I'll press if I think it's a little too, uh, too much glue is still intact. And I'll just keep pulling this until it comes loose. Once that's loose, you'll see that the inside of the magazine, let's see if I can get this, is shown. And so that spine that you see the name of the, the magazine, it's, it's not attached anymore. And this is all just glue. So once that's removed, it's actually pretty easy to start removing the pages. So let me remove this page. So these are now interior and they're gonna come out really easily. And they come out so easy that you get this perfect edge. So when you bring this to your framer, say you bring this to the framer and you just want this framed, the framer now can make decisions and option and can give space in their framing because you've given them the entire piece to play with. So if you want to crop this, you're not going to crop it. Your picture framer is going to crop it when they cut a mat. So just remember that you want to give your framer as much of the whole piece of the page as you can, even if you only need a small little piece of it. Okay, so let's pull out my my article okay so this is the last page of the article so these I don't need so I'm gonna just rip them off now what you'll find when you're doing this which I think I still have a couple more pages that I can pull this off so this is the third magazine that I'm doing I've ripped this page out of all three I also like to do that um, just again for redundancy if for some reason I crease one of these I can um, Hi! How are you? If I crease one of these, then I can choose a different one. So just remember that as well. So this one, because of the way the glue is attached to this page, it's not going to want to come apart as easily as the other ones. And that's because the glue is on the actual front of the, the paper, not just the edge. And so when I come to a page like that, I kind of just do the opposite of what I did before, which is flip the page over, go a few pages away from my article, hold the article flat, and then pull the rest of the magazine. Now when you do this, be careful because this, I have only three pages over here, where on this side I have a bunch more. So the stronger side, which is the one with more paper, um, will pull apart and the less, the, the, um, the weaker side could rip. So as I'm doing this, I can feel that I need too much tension and I might rip it. So what I'm going to do is transfer pages back over here and then just start ripping apart a few at a time until I get back to where I need to be with my article. And so you can see here, once you start really getting those pages apart, oops, this is the spine. which is just basically the glue. And once there's enough pages removed to the point where that comes apart, now I can flip back to my page here and this will all come apart super easy. And there you have it. That's how you dismantle a magazine. As you're pulling the pages apart, the edge, the, bind the binding edge, 
will um, start to just, you can feel all of the glue. The glue stays for whatever reason. It doesn't go onto the individual pages. And so sometimes the way the magazines are made, you'll have, let's see. Let's see if I can get it to focus, not on my finger. Um, that right there, if you look at these two little lines, there's a blob of glue. And so unfortunately, those blobs are there. If you try to remove them, which I'll try to do one, you can scratch and rip the page. So those you do have to live with. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that it happened on every one of these page in one of these magazines that they just happened to glue it in the exact same spot, um, which happens to be the centerfold of his article. So I will just have to mat it so it covers that. Um, but you know, when you're putting the centerfold together, you really that's when you really do want these edges to be as close and straight as you can get them. And so breaking the pages apart like I'm showing you is definitely the way to do it. Okay, so you can see I've got all my pages. I had to use two magazines so that I can, or I could get the reverse on a couple of the pages. Like I said, if you only have one magazine, you can, once you get to this point, bring them to the printer and have them copy them for you. So another tip that I like to point out to people is newspaper and magazine paper is really thin. So like you can see through it. Well, you can't because the light's coming the, the correct direction. But a lot of times um, you can see the words on the back of the page through the front, especially when it's a lot of white space. You can see the black print or the ads on the other page. Um, and so what you can do, and what I do as a picture printer, oops, wrong. Uh, you can use a blackboard instead of a whiteboard, or um, you can buy a map board. This is foam board, so you can use foam board as well. You mount the work on the foam board and so that way the black camouflages anything that is printed on the back and so you get a really seamless looking page this works especially well with newspaper too newspaper you can see through a lot um, so see right here you've got that built for mom and pops when you flip this over you can see the bee can see a lot more on camera it's hard to see on this one there's this dark line that goes across from the ad on the other side and you can see that oops you can see that right here so this newspaper or I'm sorry this um, magazine paper is a little bit thicker than some so it does hide it it's not horrible but let's watch so watch how that black line disappears when you put the blackboard behind it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing that kind of goes along with that camouflaging, uh, when you hinge this, when you attach it to the backboard when you frame it, a lot of times the acid-free tapes are um, white. And so you can sometimes see the white tape um, on the back of this. And so I will use a clear tape um, when it comes to this, just again, to guard against, um, or honestly, I'll probably end up dry mounting this with clear adhesive onto a board here at the frame shop. You will not be doing that at home, <laughs> but your framer can do that for you. They can definitely mount that to a dark background. Um, so yeah, those are my tips for framing and um, disassembling a magazine. I hope that's helpful. All right, like I said in the beginning of the video, one, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the down bar and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.